All right, I think we are live. Let's see if I can go live here. Let's see. We are going live into Facebook and live into uh, Instagram in one second, if I can get this together, because today is a special live that I'm doing. Uh, today is my 40th birthday. I don't know if this is actually working well. If this is working well, please let me know um, wherever you are watching this. Let's see. So Facebook has a new interface of uh, going live and I actually don't even know how it works. Let's see. This is not working either. Let's see. Let's see, is it on live and live video? So we are in a live stream, I think. So if you are watching this live, I would love for you to comment because I can't actually seem to see whether or not this is going live. And I'm hoping that this is live in Instagram. Pause due to poor connection. Let's see, reconnecting. All right, let's see if this is actually working. I don't know about you guys, but ever since COVID-19 has taken over, uh, my Wi-Fi or my, yeah, my Wi-Fi has been horrendous. So let's see if this will work. I don't know, we will see. We're gonna try. Right, because now we are live on Instagram, on Facebook, and I wanted to welcome you. So this is a live episode I am doing uh, for my birthday. It is my 40th birthday today, and I've decided to do my very first live broadcast of my podcast. So this will be going live on Monday, maybe even tomorrow on the Body Project podcast. And uh, I decided for my 40th birthday, I'm going to do a live conversation with you to see how this goes. So I'm not quite sure how it will go, but I wanted to talk about today about celebrating in the midst of a global pandemic and how we can actually do that when a lot of the world is in grief, in panic, in mourning. And how do we take the little pieces of our lives, like my 40th birthday, like babies being born right now, like things that typically we would celebrate that we are not celebrating right now because in the midst of a global pandemic, perhaps it feels wrong right? And so I wanted to talk to all of you about how I am celebrating my 40th birthday, how I am celebrating what just passed with my 100th episode on the Body Project podcast. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Catherine Tanaka. I am a fitness, nutrition, accountability coach, coach and the host and producer of the Body Project podcast. It is a podcast that I typically interview fitness and movement professionals on how fitness is a powerful discipline that teaches you focus, that teaches you how to be disciplined in movement, right? That can translate into altering and optimizing your entire life. The way that you honor your body, the way that you honor your thoughts, the way that you honor your relationships in your life. And my hope is that through the conversations I have with these incredible fitness and movement professionals, that people can get a glimmer of hope and how they can use movement in their own lives. Well, in the midst of COVID, you know, six weeks ago, right, when we all got quarantined, the conversation on the podcast kind of shifted, right? Because we do talk about well being and health and fitness. And because of this pandemic, we switched it to, a COVID conversation and looking at immune health and wellness in a different way, not from just a fitness perspective, right? Because I really believe that when you're 
clients, when your audience needs something, you need to support them where they are. And so the conversation turned into what do people need right now to support their immune health, to support the anxiety we are all feeling because we are in a global pandemic. And so I've been interviewing some amazing, incredible people in their niche, people that you know, our leaders in how to manage immune health, how to manage stress, how to become mindful in a time like this. Just this past week on Monday, I interviewed Samara Zelnicker, who is an incredible mindfulness coach. She is the founder of Mindfulness Matters. And we spoke about how we can be present right now, right? For many of us, the reality is that we are healthy and we are safe, right? But sometimes when we look at the news and look at what's going on in the world, we forget that we are actually healthy and safe, right? And so my intention today is to have a little bit of the conversation of where are you now? And where am I now that maybe it can give you, I don't know, hopefully some perspective, hopefully a thought of what could be in terms of possible, in terms of being in a place of hope. Um, and so I, I will perhaps have a guest on today. I'm not certain if she'll be joining us, but I wanted to share with you a little bit of my perspective of celebrating in the midst of this all. You know, it has been an interesting time. I'm homeschooling my two kids while trying to you know, figure out how to support my clients in a productive way that hopefully my business is not going to completely go under hereafter. But the reality is, is that a global pandemic has put a halt on the economy, has put a halt on so many things. But nonetheless, I believe that when there are things to be celebrated in life, that this is an opportunity to look at what we have right now. Right? The question is, are you safe? Are you healthy? And is there some silver lining in what you are experiencing right now? Right? And, you know, I'm just trying to see if we're actually going live into Facebook. I can't, Facebook has a new interface and I can't actually figure it out. Um, but let me share with you how I celebrated today and how I celebrated my 100th episode. Initially, before this pandemic, I was going to do a massive client appreciation paired with a live studio audience kind of podcast. And clearly that did not go down. Um, but I think that regardless, I wanted to celebrate my podcast in a certain way, my 100th episode, and I did a solo episode, just acknowledging what is going on right now right? And for my 40th birthday, I actually had a really beautiful day. Um, I had people coming in from Oakville, from Vaughan, from Aurora, from Newmarket to come and hang out with me, to drop off gifts, to just come say hi. And truthfully, I do not like celebrating my birthday. And this year I felt maybe more connected than ever to people because I wasn't able to host a birthday party and there wasn't the traditional ways of celebrating, I feel like people made a different effort to connect, whether it was sending virtual cards or virtual messages or video messages of people singing, of people showing up at my door. It was actually pretty spectacular. So thank you to all of you that are watching that actually came and hung out with me for a bit. Um, I really appreciate that. But you know, one of the things about celebrating in the midst of places of grief, you still wanna be able to honor the times and the places and the people that are struggling, right? And I, I think it's important to acknowledge that there is a global grief going on. But I think that we all need to remember that self-care is allowing ourselves to feel a little bit of joy in those moments when there is so much angst around us, right? And I really do believe that we have control of what we can be present to, right? And it's not to say that it diminishes or discounts what is going on because I honor what is going on tremendously, right? But it is to say that you have an opportunity every single day to 
hold your thoughts sacred and hold your space sacred and practice self-love and self-compassion, right? For me, I do it through movement. Uh, I think that, and I've spoken to many fitness professionals currently right now, I think fitness and movement professionals have a very unique and special role right now. We are beacons for our clients. And I say this, if you've listened to my podcast before, every single week that I believe that fitness and movement professions are, professionals are beacons of knowledge and guidance for our clients to support them when they don't have the ammunition, the motivation to show up for themselves. And for all of you fitness professionals that are listening or watching, watching this, I believe that your role to be a guide for your clients is more important now than ever because more now than ever, our health is our wealth, right? Because right now in a global pandemic, what we know for sure is that if you aren't healthy, if you cannot recover from getting, it is a very dire situation, right? So our health is our wealth more now than ever. But part of that is understanding that right now with the stress being heightened around us energetically, right? That there is a fight or flight response that happens and that's natural. But in saying that, we need to take responsibility for our bodies and our health. The mind leads the body, the body leads the mind to say that we need to be responsible and mindful of how we are outputting our energy, how we are practicing self-care, and how we are metabolizing those stress hormones. Now, movement, exercise is proven to metabolize those stress hormones, right? So that you can process it and move it out of your body energetically, right? And I really believe that fitness and movement professionals right now are really important to support their clients, to build strength in their bodies, which will translate to strength in your mindset, resiliency in your immune system, right? To get out of your head and into your body, into your breath, right? So I have pivoted my in-person studio that I had to close down on March the 16th and created an online studio so that people can show up for themselves, so that they can show up for themselves to be strong. Showing up for yourself when you don't want to is a powerful thing to feel strong in your body and to almost go through the motions knowing that it's like hydration, right? If you're not thirsty, but the motion of saying, okay, I need to hydrate because it's good for my body is a really great place to be. And so, you know, I really wanted to have the conversation of maybe you can celebrate in the midst of, hang on, I've got my two kids that are supposed to be going to sleep. Bye. I need you to prepare for the Yeah, okay, so quiet voice is also right. Okay. Sorry. My husband is working tonight. He's one of our, I guess, frontline workers, um, supporting people that are moving through their own challenges and grief. So I am solo tonight with my kids. <laughs> and for some reason, I decided to do a live broadcast at 7.30 when they're going to sleep. For some reason, I thought miraculously they'd be sleeping by now, but that is not the case. And it's still light out, so it actually changes. It changes how my kids interpret what time it is to go to sleep, because if it's still light out in their mind right now, they think they should be awake. So, celebrating. So ask yourself, how are you able to Look at the silver lining in this, right? And I've asked so many of my clients, like, how are you managing through this time? And what is really actually beautiful is that many people are looking at this time as an opportunity to slow down, right? And so ask yourself, how are you slowing down? Are you actually slowing down right now? right? I know that my husband, for example, because he is working full time and he's in an industry that has to support some part of this. COVID-19, that he is not slowing down and he's ramping up. So that is also something to consider. How are you supporting yourself on a day-to-day -day basis? Because one of the things that I support my clients in is how can they manage their stress in times of 
you know, overwhelm in times of busyness. And for some of us, people are not quarantining and actually able to slow down like some of us that are stuck at home. But I think we need to look at both sides and say, how can we honor ourselves? How can we celebrate ourselves? How can we find the silver lining to boost ourselves up? Right. And so, you know, there were a lot of things that I could have talked spoken about today. I was going to go into some of the lessons I've learned, not only through this podcast, but in the last decade from 30 to 40. Right. And, you know, when you're not in a global pandemic, there is so much that you can reflect on. But what I wanted to look at today, because of my role as a health and fitness and a wellness professional, is asking the question to you, right? How do you think your well being is right now? How do you think the well being is moving into the future? One of the things that I know for certain is that a friend of mine, Jill Bunny, is revolutionizing the way that fitness is being looked at by trainers right now. She is the founder of CBT Meets Fitness. Um, and she is inputting from a corporate standpoint, from a training the trainer standpoint, how can you use the fundamentals of cognitive behavioral therapy to alter the way that trainers like myself are supporting their clients, right? And I think that this conversation is so relevant right now because mental health is a really important conversation right now in the midst of this global pandemic when people are feeling overwhelmed and people are feeling stuck in so many ways in anxiety, in fear, in panic. But what I wanted to propose today is how can we look at the future of fitness? How can we look at the future of well-being? And, you know, if you are stuck in a kind of position right now that you're not able to see that glimmer yet, I invite you to bring it back to the conversation of hope, right? Of those moments that people get down on their knees and pray for something greater than themselves. Because I personally believe that this, you know, reset of the earth is exactly that. Right? This is an opportunity to cleanse, to detox, to birth something new, birth something different. And my hope is that you are able to birth something different from this time. So my 40th birthday is today. You know, 40 is so interesting, right? A girlfriend of mine the other day when we did a little mini kind of conversation asked me like how are you actually feeling about turning 40 are you feeling like the midlife crisis kind of situation are you feeling i don't know overwhelmed or scared or uncertain about uncertain about being and turning 40 i don't actually know i haven't given it much thought but what i am present to is a lot of love a lot of joy around me a lot of, you know, health and abundance of my little ones being around me, right? I mean, and don't get me wrong. I have many days of overwhelm. Sorry, my kids are talking to me. Yeah, go ahead. So I have many days of overwhelm and... Yeah, overwhelm is the best way to describe it. Because I'm homeschooling schooling two kids. The reason why I didn't go to teacher's college is because I didn't want to become a teacher, right? But now, like many of you, we are now homeschooling our children. And I don't know about you, but the way that I learned math is very different than Montessori math. My daughter's a Montessori. And I do not have the bandwidth to be able to facilitate what they need right now. And what I am learning every single day, and one of, one of the things that I practice in my life is that every day you get to a redo, almost. You get a choice, an opportunity to say, okay, you know, yesterday didn't work and I didn't accomplish all the things that I thought I would or thought I should, right? 
but today is a new day and we can do it again. And every single day I'm realizing that when I feel overwhelmed with my kids trying to homeschool, that I can say, no, you know what? It didn't work today. And that's okay. Let's try it again tomorrow. And that's how we can approach the way we feel about this, right? I believe that your well-being, your mental health and resilience through, resiliency through this time is like lifting that dumbbell, is like getting stronger every single workout. It is the practice of, right? And that's why I love yoga so much because it's a yoga practice. It's never about the mastery. The mastery is through the motion and the movement and the practice, right? Because what I know for sure and what like my friend Tracy Stigrati spoke about on the podcast just a week and a half ago or two, three, maybe it was three weeks ago now, I'm losing track of time, is that this pandemic is a marathon, right? It is a long game and life is short, but we need to take it one day at a time. And every day you are in training, strengthening your body, your mind, those muscles, that resiliency, that immune system, right? And so that is worth celebrating. You practicing every day and saying, I'm stronger today than I was yesterday. My resiliency is a little better today than it was yesterday. You know, I often speak about on the podcast and to my clients, it's about the baby steps and about those mini celebrations because if you can look at the micro habits that you're building day after day, those baby steps that you're taking one foot in front of the other to build that strength and resiliency, getting closer to the goal, it's kind of like how a mountain is built, is made, right? A mountain doesn't show up, right? It is those plates that push and push and push and day after day, millimeter by millimeter, all of a sudden you have this massive Kilimanjaro, this massive K2, this Everest that has been built by baby steps. So that's kind of like the resiliency that I hope you are all gaining through this time. Now I know that my hope is that my friend will be joining me shortly. Let's see. Let us see. Let's see, I'm not sure. But, you know, I would love to hear from you guys. If you guys are watching live, how are you managing through this time? How are you feeling through all of this, right? Um, you know, one of the special things that I find about this time is that we have an opportunity to ask the question of, can I practice self-compassion today? What can I do for myself today? Can I love a little more today? Whether it's yourself or a partner, whether it is a child or a friend, right? I wrote about this yesterday on Instagram and Facebook. There are three M's that I am practicing right now that I know will move the needle forward in my health, in my immune health, in my mental wellness, and that's movement, that's mindfulness, and that's meaningful connection. Movement, simple. Get outside and move your body. Join me every weekday, right? Monday through Friday, 9 a.m., you're doing live workouts. I show up for you so you can show up for yourself, right? Movement, move your body. And I was actually speaking to somebody about this today. I really believe that routine is so vital during this time. Routine gives you a glimpse of some normalcy, right? Wake up at the same time as you used to, right? If you were a 5 a.m. or like me, you don't have to wake up at 5, 5 a.m. if you don't actually have anywhere to go. but don't kid yourself. I'm still up at 6 a.m. cycling with my husband. It actually has been really special. One of the things Jordan and I, it's cliche, but we met in the gym. We met at the York Club Club when I was a spin instructor there. And he used to come to my night at 6 a.m. spin classes on a Friday with his friends, right? And we are now, we haven't trained together for 
almost a decade, probably since we were married, right around the time before having kids. And my son is eight and a half now. And um, we haven't trained together for over eight years. And it has been kind of special that we get to ride together for only half hour, 20 minutes, half hour before he goes to the office. It has been lovely, right? And so routine is super, super important. It gives us normalcy in a place where things are uncertain and not normal. So I encourage you, find a routine that might work for you, right? Mindfulness. So what does that mean? So if you want to get a little deeper into that, I had an amazing, amazing interview this week with Samara out of LA, founder of um, Mindfulness Matters, because mindfulness matters. How did I forget that? Um, and we spoke about how, what is mindfulness? About coming into present moment, right? Coming into what is, and she gave three amazing tangible ways that you can come into what is, right? And actually I wrote a blog post about it. You can find it at kathleensnacker.com. We can, you can find it um, on the podcast itself. You can download that on iTunes or Google Play, wherever you listen to your podcast. It was incredible and very, very much worth the listen. But mindfulness, getting into your breath, getting into what is present, right? I've been encouraging everyone and their moms right now because we do have time. And if you are busy with your kids, you can still step away. Our children are completely capable, even mine, are completely capable of doing something for 10, 20 minutes for the right? So take the time to maybe find a five-minute meditation to get into your breath, right? To do something a little different, to work on that mindset piece that mindfulness piece, right? I think that this is such a beautiful opportunity to get centered and present in that, right? The second thing about that is, could you maybe try journaling? We spoke about this with Samara, we spoke about this with Tracy Sugrati, we spoke about this with Michelle Jacobs about a month ago, about how neurologically, physiologically, things shift when you, neuroscience will say, when you take your thoughts and put it on paper, it actually changes the state of how it occurs to you in your head, right? It's almost like a direct download onto paper, right? And so try that on. It has pivoted the way that people interpret their stress, interpret their fears. It has altered the way that people are feeling about this time. And so I invite you, right, from a mindset perspective, could you try that? Even if it is saying, I am safe, reminding yourself, I am healthy, reminding yourself, right? Because it's about that and moving through that, that that is where the magic happens. The final piece, meaningful connection meaningful connection, right? In a time where physical distancing is the norm now. Six feet away, stay away from me, right? But it's physical distancing. It does not mean that you cannot get meaningfully connected with somebody. You can be connected with people meaningfully. You can find meaningful connection with others by doing this, by you don't have to do a Facebook Live or an Instagram Live, but you can call your friends. You can call people that you, I don't like sitting on the phone at all. To be honest, I call maybe two people, my husband, my best friends. That's it. Two of my best, whatever. Very seldomly, you guys know if you know me, I very seldomly am I on the phone, right? Um, but this is the time. FaceTime your friends, your parents, your loved one. <gasps> Someone's at the door. Please hold. Please hold. Do you want to come for a ride with me? Maybe we'll just, oh, this is not going to work. Okay, let's see. I'm going to have to uh, jump back on Facebook Live in one second. Who was at the door? What do you mean?
Yeah, it's okay. I can go back on. All right, so I wanted to end with my birthday wish, right? Because it is such a crazy, uncertain time that, you know, I thought, why not? Let's make an ask for a birthday wish. So here is my birthday wish. So I don't want any gifts, but I have requested that if you can donate five to ten dollars or less, whatever you want to donate, I am in. I am donating all the money I am raising to. I think it's called Raise the Roof. It is a Toronto organization to support the homeless right now. Right, we're so fortunate to be in a house and to have food, but there are a lot of people that I don't think they're forgotten. But it's kind of survival right now maslow's hierarchy right and i will be donating all the proceeds to them so that they can have food they can have shelter at times when there is a lot of scarcity around that my second request is if you are watching if you have listened thanks babe Thanks, Car Carmelinda DeMano is going to be DJing a virtual awkward dance party for my birthday tonight. I'm super excited for it. It's gonna be epically awkward, but it's gonna be amazing, right? Sorry. So my birthday request, and I'm going to be giving a bunch of giveaways. My request is if you have not listened to the podcast, please rate, review, and subscribe. Here is a way that you can win one of these five prizes I have, right? So you need to download three episodes and subscribe and leave a review. Once you leave a review, please email me so I know that it is your review at info at katherinetanaka.com. I will post that wherever you are watching, viewing this. And um, you will be eligible for one of five giveaways. These are really fun giveaways. One is some amazing Hydrate by Age Quencher. It is the electrolyte that I use every single day. Um, and electrolytes are amazing right now when we are, are so stressed. And here's a question for you. How has your hydration been, right? Because hydration is extremely important when you are stressed, right? Our body needs to metabolize those stress hormones and hydration is part of that, right? So, age quencher, uh, Hydrate by Age Quencher, prize pack for one of you that is coming your way. Second is, I think I actually have it right here. Um, I am giving away this amazing, I love Sage and I bought this, uh, for one of you. This is a headache remedy kit. It actually has uh, some amazing stuff in here. Peppermint halo wand, peppermint stick, everything you need for an at-home remedy for headache relief. That is a prize pack that I'm sending out. I'm also giving, this is a, it's already wrapped, but a universe has your back journal. And actually one of my best friends, Radhika Lakani, gave me the uh, Gabby Bernstein Super Attractor Journal, and I'm giving away the Universe Has Your Back um, journal, because one of the things we need to remember during this time is that the Universe Has Your Back, that you're going to be safe, and we're going to get through this together, 
right? Can you hear my child repeating everything that I'm saying in the background? Um, so the other prize pack that I'm giving away are these Louise Hay amazing, do I have any of them here? They are power thought cards. I actually use them with my kids all the time. They are kind of uh, oracle cards. Do you see my kids in the back trying to find them for you? They are oracle cards. No, these are my uh, Kyle Gray. No, those aren't them either. No, they are, it's okay. So they are, um, Louise Hay has these beautiful, really kid-friendly uh, power thought cards, right? They are kind of affirmations that you can use so that you can reset and set your intention for the day. They're actually quite beautiful. And so I will be giving one of those away to one of the five people that rate, review, and subscribe, download, three episodes uh and you know what if you haven't had a chance yet we have been doing one to two covid conversations a week for the last six weeks and these conversation guys are pretty epic we've had leaders like tracy sagrati who is an incredible master in um yoga therapy uh speaking about the science, the physiology behind metabolizing stress hormones. I had Michelle Jacobs on, who is an incredible heart math practitioner, and we spoke about um, emotional freedom te techniques, tapping, right? And we actually went through an entire 10 minute beautiful meditation, and we did some tapping through that session. You know, there's a YouTube video if you guys wanna watch it, there's the podcast really amazing stuff you can use with your kids if your kids are anxious right now or feeling overwhelmed that you can use with yourself to remind yourself that you are safe right um who else we had dr jillian mandit she is the happiness doctor canada's happiness doctor and we spoke about how we can move through this time right we spoke a little bit about the mental health perspective she is a happiness researcher and she knows intimately how mental health is a really important conversation as it is, let alone in the midst of a global pandemic, right? And so she spoke a little bit about the, about the realities of how some people aren't getting out of bed these days. And so, you know, I think these conversations are super important. And I know a lot of people have been messaging me and said, Catherine, I miss your podcast because I'm not driving to work or I'm not picking up my kids. So I'm not listening to it regularly, but that's okay. You can strap it in when your kids are doing the homeschooling, when you're going for a walk, right? This is part of the self-care. It's can you take those little moments in time to give back to yourself in a way that feels good, right? It's like when I sit down for that five minutes for a cup of coffee, Ron, like me and my girlfriend, Veronica, were talking about this last week. It's like, that's the gold, right? And it's those little things that add up to that self-care and compassion and love that we so need right now. And so my hope is that these little prize packs that five of you are going to win are going to give you a little bit of that moment for yourself during this time, right? And so if you want to be able to win one of those, we're giving away, you need to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast, The Body Project Podcast. You can find it on iTunes, on Spotify, on uh, iHeartRadio, on Google Play, wherever most podcasts are found, you can find it, find it there. So rate, review, subscribe, download three episodes. Make sure you message me that you've done that so that I can get your contact info and get you a prize pack. So we're doing Age Quencher, by, sorry, Hydrate by Edge Quencher, an amazing electrolyte. We are doing an amazing headache relief remedy, amazing stuff by Sage or Sage, however you guys say it. Uh, an, uh, Universe Has Your Back journal by Gabby Bernstein, a Louise Hay uh, Power Thought Cards for you guys so that you can use with your kids or you can use it with yourself. Affirmations, you can take the cards and stick them up everywhere. They are beautifully decorated, um, super fun stuff. And I would love to hear from you. What is your favorite episode? Have you listened to the podcast? Do you hate the podcast? Do you love the podcast, right? And my hope is that you are celebrating with me in a little way right? It's my 40th birthday and I am celebrating with you 
me, you, and the mic. Because I think being connected, meaningful connection is super important. And so I wanted to share a part of my birthday with all of you, my voice with you about how it is important to take moments for yourself during this time and how to remind yourself from a mindset or mindfulness perspective, you are healthy and you are safe, right? And that movement and routine can give you some normalcy, right? So move your body, people. I promise you will feel better about it. Like Tony Robbins speaks about, it's about changing your state, how I like to quote him all the time. Movement will change your state. It'll change your physiology, getting you out of your head and into your body, into your breath, right? It is, for me, meditation through motion. And I think that if everyone can adopt a little bit of that, and actually I was going to interview Dr. Tim Sharp out of Australia, who is the happiness doctor on the other side of the world, who says exactly that, that the most abused drug is food and the most underutilized antidepressant is exercise, right? And so science will tell you, science will tell you that moving your body will change your physiology. And it's not about being, you know, lean and fit and this super fitness athlete, whatever. No, it's about you showing up for yourself. You showing up with compassion and self-love to yourself to honor your body as your body is your temple, right? It is your temple. The only temple your soul has to reside is this body of yours, right? And so show up for yourself. That little bit, you know, do a yoga flow, five minute yoga flow. There is a lot of free, amazing resources right now. Do a fitness workout, a hit. Come join me at 9 a.m. if you want to try out my kind of style. I love resistance training. I like doing hits. That's my thing, right? My love. Right? But find what works for you. There are probably some incredible Pilates instructors that for probably five bucks a week, you could jump on into their membership sites, right? Find what works for you. But one thing is for certain, your health is your wealth more now than ever before. And I do know that energetically, if you change your state, you change the vibration of your cells, right? And it elevates the frequency of your cells, making your well-being more tangible, more live now than ever. So before I sign off, I want to say that I see you, all of you the challenges, the struggles, the anxiety, the depression. And I invite you to, whether it's listen to a podcast of mine or someone else, or you know, doing something for yourself that aligns with the philosophy of moving your body, trying to be mindful, finding meaningful connection. I know that it will support you and it will elevate you. And so, in me sharing a moment of my birthday with you, I hope you'll celebrate with me a little bit. Celebrate this moment that we can connect like this. Celebrate the fact that you are breathing right now. Celebrate the fact that it was a sunny day today, right? And if it wasn't sunny where you were, celebrate that it is spring. And if you're on the other side of the world, that it is still beautiful fall, right? You know, I really believe that, especially in times where there is maybe more darkness than light, that you find what lights you up. You find that glimmer of hope, right? Because hope is such a beautiful driving energy in the world right now. And I believe that if you can celebrate that, if you can find that little bit, that you can shift, shift a little bit. It's not about huge leaps. It's about micro baby steps, just a little bit, a micrometer. And that micrometer, day after day, week after week, month after month, moment after moment, that you can take a breath and choose again. Okay, say, I screwed up. Like with my kids, when I lose my shit with my kids' guys and I scream at them, I go back to them and say, you know what? Mommy's having a hard time right now. I'm sorry, right? 
<laughs> right? And you get an opportunity to ch choose again, to say, you know what, I messed up. I'm going to try harder. I'm going to try better. I'm going to, I'm going to do a little different next time. And that opportunity to pause and say, okay, that pause, that moment of being present and aware and saying, acknowledging like, oh my gosh, that really triggered me. That really pissed me off. That really made me upset. That really oh made me want to crawl under the covers is another chance to, yes, I feel those feels, Renee. Thank you for jumping on, right? That's exactly what it's about. Taking that moment and feeling that and saying, you know what? I can choose again, right? Because here's the thing about that, guys. We have patterned our entire life, whether it's feelings of anxiety or stress or getting triggered by something. And, you know, we talk about that often in my online program about what triggers our food, the way that we eat, right? Is, is it shiny object syndrome? Is it, um, you know, emotions that trigger you always eating in a certain fashion. But it's the same thing with our thoughts and our emotions, right? It's like our kid does something that triggers that emotion that makes us set us off, that makes us spiral into this like upset or this bad mood. Like I know for me, it shows up like a bad mood, like I'm in pissed off mood, right? But it's about catching yourself and being like, okay, that triggered me. What was it about that that triggered me? right? And then when you can bring that awareness, then you can choose. Then you can say, okay, you know what? I got triggered there. And my automatic reaction is to do X, Y, Z. But you have a choice every single time. It's like building that bicep curl, right? That you can choose and change and build strength and resiliency different than before. I appreciate you guys showing up live. I appreciate you listening to this episode. I will be announcing next week. You have basically um, until Thursday next week, until these five prize packs will be given away. I will let you know live, actually. Let's go live and share who won them. So if you're just joining me, yes, meltdowns. I hear Belinda. I hear you, my friend. Actually, Belinda, amazing, incredible friend and client, dropped off two <laughs> massive chocolate bars to me today. So thank you for that. Um, but like I said before, Dr. Chip is quoting Dr. Tim Sharp out of Australia. Food is the most overutilized, abused drug. Exercise is the most underutilized antidepressant. And so please, oh, here are the Power Thought cards. Peyton just handed them to me by Louise Hay. These amazing little Power Thought cards. Uh, that I use for kids, right? They're amazing. They are amazing. Right? Like, for example, the one I just pulled up. Life supports me, right? Life supports me. Life created me to be fulfilled. I trust life, and life is always there at every turn. I am safe. Another one. I am safe. Let's read I am beautiful, and everybody loves me. Right? That's a beautiful reminder. I rat it. What does this say? I radiate acceptance and, and I am deeply, deeply loved, loved by others. others. And love surrounds me and protects me. Love surrounds Amen. me. Amen. Amen. Love surrounds me and protects me. Right? Um, and so if you want your own power thought cards, if you want prize pack from Sage, I would love for you to rate, review, subscribe on the podcast and let's connect. So I know that we can get you a prize pack. Yes, I've gotten a lot of flowers today. Anyways, oh, I am very, I'm grateful that you've joined me today. I appreciate you tuning in week after week on the podcast. Um, have a beautiful weekend. Thank you for sharing some of my birthday with me. And stay safe, stay healthy. Bye for now.